Hey everybody, welcome to this bonus edition, actually, of the Eagle-Eyed Rugby Podcast. Now, uh, I haven't done an Eagle-Eyed Podcast or episode in a long time. We've been really concentrating on U.S. Rugby Happy Hour Live. Uh, but every so often, we're going to put out some uh, content for this as well. And you'll be able to find this uh, podcast replay uh, on both U.S. Rugby Happy Hour Live and Eagle-Eyed Rugby, Rugby Podcast platforms. It also... Um, you can watch it on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. And that's all USA Rugby stuff as well, US Rugby Happy Hour Live. But this bonus edition is a, is a special edition. I had the pleasure uh, of being able to interview the two directors of a movie that just dropped in cinemas this past week in North America. It was released la- late last year uh, down in New Zealand and Australia for obvious reasons. Uh, but I was able to talk to uh, Hamish Bennett and Paul Middleditch, uh, the two directors of this film, and it was so pleasant to talk to about this. And now the movie is called Uproar. Uh, it stars Mini Driver, Reese Darby, and Julian Dennison. Julian is a fantastic actor, uh, and he plays Josh Walker, the 17 year old kid. Now, the film takes place back in 1981, and it's set in New Zealand when the arrival of the South African Springboks sets off a nationwide protest against apartheid and racism. And then Josh, obviously played by Julian, uh, he's a 17 year old mixed race kid uh, who's you know, been a bit of passive bystander all of his life and is on the fence, let's say, and he's suddenly forced to stand up for himself and his family and his future. There's so much warmth, humor, and emotions in this film. It's just, it is so good, and I cannot wait for it to come out on like a digital platform for everyone else to see because, like I said, it's such theaters. Uh, the acting is superb, the writing is great, um, and as you will see when you watch this interview, the directors uh, love it. I mean, they, obviously they love it, but I mean, they're, they're, they have so much back for this also especially Hamish you know he lived through it when he was a kid uh, in, in New Zealand uh, but it's such a good film 100% on Rotten Tomatoes that's a great score anyway check it out leave a comment let me know what you think let's watch the trailer first and then we'll get right into the interview chugga 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 big black engine coming through Josh I've started an amateur drama club at lunchtime well there's four of us so it's not it's not big, but still. Why are you asking me? Oh, I just thought it might be something you'd enjoy. Five things, five things, five things, five things. Food! Bread. Yes! I think you should coach the team. Oh, a homo? Was that a question or a statement? What? You know, was it a question like, am I a homo or was it a statement like, you're a homo? Performing arts? Sounds like a secure career move. Madigan says I'm a good actor. Oh, does he? And you are not crap, Josh. Well, any behavior that threatens our ideal will not be tolerated. Prime boy, come join us. I'm not really a match, I'm more of a sitter. You can't be like that. Out here is the real world. It's different, so you've got to be different. I didn't know all that about your people. Darling, they're your people too. You know how to work that thing? Uh, yeah, I think so. Joshua chose to disobey my instructions. You nearly sabotage everything. We were protesting. They told you you get expelled from school. I you hate that school. I'm a Māori surrounded by white kids. You don't know what it feels like. To not fit in. It's hard and you can't do the thing that makes you you. You got one job, love. You do whatever I need you to do to keep this family together. We have the whole world watching us right now and we can't waste this moment. Josh is a really tricky kid to get to know. It's when he's performing that we get the best insight as to who he really is. We all have our stories. They're not there to pull us down. They're there to push us forward. You know this way's faster, right? I think I've ruptured my gluteus maximus. It is impossible to rupture your ass. Paul Hamish, uh, thank you so much for giving me your time. Uh, uh, good morning, I believe it is for you. It is. By the way, yeah. It is. It is. Uh, all right. First of all, uh, congratulations on a fantastic, fantastic film. It was so 
fun or so nice to watch. I got so much out of it. Uproar is based on real life events. You know, talk about how this film came together. You know, was it you two sitting down with an idea and started to write it out? Was it that simple? Um, well, uh, probably the best way to start is that Genesis, the project, came from my experiences um, at high school in Wellington in 1981. Hmm. Uh, so I went to um, I went to a school in Wellington that was uh, a conservative Catholic school, uh, and I was basically a, an outsider. Um, I was um, into painting and, and 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 filmmaking and things that. At that time, nobody was really interested in. They were all interested in a rugby culture um, or um, other pursuits that weren't, weren't, I suppose, natural for me. So the interesting thing is the only way really to fit in in that school was through rugby. So that was one of the, um, let's say, seeds for this piece. The other was um, the issue, I think, in, in my experience in 1981, seeing how our country was divided over issues that were... Um, extremely important if you could imagine globally but locally we were all just interested in the rugby and other people were also interested in the injustice that was happening to um, black South Africans and then there was the whole nature of the hypocritical feeling of that also New Zealand being a what we would say is a very culturally aware country at that time and yet there were a lot of um uh, discrepancies between that. And then from that, that screenplay that I worked on for a number of years, um, um, the lead character was based on myself, but then Julian Dennison, I, I got involved to, to play another role in the film, and Julian's Māori. And so therefore, the whole nature of the, um, uh, the gravitas of the racial issue suddenly became really exciting. But from that point of view then, uh, it was really important to um, try and deal with that that subject. Um, then working with a Maori writer or, or co-director, which was Hamish. So Hamish then came in at that point, and um, and I suppose started to, to shape the picture with those ideas in mind. And maybe Hamish can take over from there if you like. Yeah, yeah. Like that's that's essentially it. I think it was a. Um... You know, as Paul kind of outlined, it was a pretty complex time in New Zealand's history. Um, you know, rugby is a, is a huge part of our, our culture. Like me and Paul, both, you know, rugby lovers, you know, we're, we're big, big fans of it. But at the same time, I think it was it was rugby or nothing for for our country for a, for a, um, for a long period of time. And I think yeah. when this tour came, I, I, I think um, whilst it was a very complex time for the whole country, uh, for Māori, um, it was probably even more complex because whilst quite rightly people were protesting what was happening in South Africa, there wasn't quite the same awareness of the injustices that had been faced by Māori in our own country. And so I guess when it came to putting Julian um, into that lead role, it wasn't as simple as putting a young Māori boy in that story and, and just letting the, the story play out as it, as it was. Um, there was a whole lot, a whole other layer of, of quite significant issues that needed to be addressed. Um, and so, yeah, that, that's where the story kind of uh, kind of progressed. One extra thing to that, which I think is quite relevant, um, was the fact that also there was a lot of New Zealand who didn't feel that there was an issue that Māori really had had something to say about. There was a huge side that was going, well, what, what do you mean? Look, look what's happening in South Africa. And so from that point of view, there was this, this strange irony that, one, they weren't educated, they had no idea about the injustices, to they didn't really care and they wanted they wanted not to mix rugby and politics so it was a very interesting thing that particularly for our our own new zealand audience now we look back at it um retrospectively and realize oh my god just just we looked back and went that was how we were dealing with it at that time so it was an interesting film for 2023 when it first came out so uh, you mentioned to the new zealand audience um, you know, it opened this past weekend in North America, but how has the film been received both in Australia and New Zealand? Yes, it's been a really, it's been a really lovely response, um, Bill. It's, um, I think it's a story that whilst, you know, people of, of a certain generation, which includes us, uh, you know, the 1981 tour is something that, that is still really um, well known. Um, you know, whilst I was, I was kind of, I was too young to remember the tour, um, my parents, uh, where you know have, have very very strong memories of that tour and and of 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 the way it kind of um, divided kind of uh, the country and, and and shaped communities, 
But I think, you know, for 2023 audiences in New Zealand, it's it was quite, um, well, surprising, but probably shouldn't be surprising that many of our, our younger people in particular weren't really aware of that of that part of our history. Um, you know, it, it was only 40 years ago, but that, that's that's a lifetime. And, and, and that's for, for a lot of our people, uh, you know, being aware of these, of, of the context of that time is really important. I think um, one thing that came out of that tour, one of the leaders of the um, protest movement, John Minto, said that um, the the most the, the most positive thing that came out of that tour was the extra awareness that it developed um, uh, around New Zealand for issues relating to Māori. And I think the fact that that was quite a significant shift for our country is something that... Um, you know, it's it's important that, that for for people now living in New Zealand, young people now, to be aware of that. And um, so, whilst it, it kind of whilst the the, the the you know the connection or or the um, the enjoyment of of the film has been really um, you know been really gratifying for us, I think um, raising some some of the you know or bringing to bringing to the forefront some of these important um, uh, issues that are, that, that our country's faced was. Um, you know, it's something that we take pride in and been a part of, of sharing, I guess. Yeah, it was interesting too that I think um, uh, the intention with our team, but but I also really wanted to make sure that this film was um, for 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 everybody, a big audience, so that it was able to. While we have very specific cultural issues, it has a universal quality to it. It's also inclusive from that point of view. Um, the fact is also that you know at the time in New Zealand. Um, you know, 95% of the people who were marching and protesting were, were white students. And from that perspective, it's a very interesting kind of way of, of, of looking at things from that perspective. But more than that, also, I think these issues in this picture are universal. And I think there's something that has certainly translated in terms of it being seen overseas, particularly in Toronto, issues to do with um, having a voice, issues to do with um, um, finding your place, identity, um, all of those things I think can work for any, you know, any group from that perspective. So we're really excited about the universal quality to it, which um, I think is really resonating as I'm seeing so far critically with um, North American audiences and critics alike. As you mentioned, it's a very um, serious topic, very emotional film and serious film as well. Um, but it's also really funny. There's so many uh, funny moments in the film uh, was that your intent early on? I mean, and, and speaking of Julian, he, he's really funny. I, I've never knew him as that kind of actor. And of course, Reese's mannerisms alone were cracking me up. I, I do think, I mean, I often compare from a writing point of view, I compare it to uh, like a funeral or like in, in Marty's situation, a, a tangi. So like a funeral, you know, you you have your sad moments. Obviously, it's an incredibly kind of a tough time, but that, those, that laughter is such an important thing. Yeah. Like it provides that levity or that lift that you you really need at a certain point. And so, when you're dealing with heavy topics, I think you know you, you don't want you, you, you as much as you want to go to those places. You you need to provide that balance. And um, so, I think when we have a story which deals with um, pretty significant issues to do with race, to to do with culture, um, to do with you know bullying. Um, it's it'll be pretty easy to go into a pretty kind of a dark place, but I think you know for both of us, for me and Paul, I think you know I, I you know glass half full people, and and we want to find hope in our story. I think it'd be a pretty tough thing to direct something and spend a couple of years or something when you can't find the light at the end of it or the hope at the end of it. And so yeah, we 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 were so gifted or so blessed to have um, people of of Reese and and, and Julian's capability because. They brought that humor um, and that that levity so so beautifully. Yeah, yeah. It's it's interesting because um, um, when when we first worked on the screenplay, myself and Sonia Whiteman, um, the first three draft it was always humor was combined with drama with with um, with tragedy to a degree as well. And so I think that in my my work, particularly as a director, I've always worked with 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 humor and drama. But I think the really exciting part of it was that when Julian wanted to play the lead role, um, Hamish had an opportunity then to know he was writing for Julian. And that was great because, you know, we, I think, understand his really unique ability as a, um, as a 
uh, not only as an actor, but as a in, uh, as a person, what he can actually his charisma, his his tone. But then also, I think what was exciting was that Julian wanted to do something with this role he's never done before. Same with Reese. Reese's mm-hmm. never done a performance like this. And I think they both saw an opportunity to actually really act and perform. And it was interesting um, listening to Minnie Driver, actually, just saying how, in some of her interviews, how exciting it was and how fabulous they are as actors. And it was interesting looking at Minnie. I go back, I was actually just the other night watching um, uh, Good Will Hunting. She's really funny. Yeah. You know, she's actually, and yeah. it was interesting. She was able to bring that to it as well. So we were excited to have a great ensemble of actors who were are not only amusing, but had great drama, you know? So it, that was a, a great combo. Now, Paul, is it difficult directing? Okay, I don't know if I can say this right. Is it difficult directing an actor acting as someone who is learning to act? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the interesting thing is that, um, um, is that Julian went through that process yeah, Julian went, I just channeled what I did at school because he remembered that. His drama class was only like three or four kids out of out of 800. And same with same with Reese. Reese, Reese channeled his uh, acting teacher, got him into it as well. And I think there was some really exciting, um, like, for instance, when, 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 when Hamish came up with the idea of Five Things, Five Things, which he had seen as a, as a, um, as a, a kind of acting exercise, was hilarious because um, the, the nature of kind of, those opportunities, and maybe Hamish can chat a little bit about that. There was a, a great sense of sort of free-forming with some of that, which I think worked really well. Yeah, well, I think probably the, the, the funny, the good thing about, I think, you know, for both, you know, for both Reese and Julian going through their process of kind of, like one of them is meant to be learning to act and one of them is meant to be the acting teacher. And I think particularly for Reese's character, I mean, he's actually not a very good acting coach either. Like, he, whilst Julian is Julian's character is still learning how to to be an actor, you know, Reese's character is feeling his way as a, as, a, as a teacher as well. And I think probably they, they both understood that it wasn't necessarily about the acting; it was about finding a connection with someone else and about celebrating them for who they are. And 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 so I think that that the the acting is the byproduct of of you know Reese's character seeing Julian, understanding yeah. Julian's character and, and wanting to kind of um, promote and celebrate that. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about the, the the rugby angle of this film. Outside of South Africa touring, New Zealand during the, the apartheid era, um, mm. you know, what does the game of rugby in this film mean? You know, you know, typically when we speak of rugby, we talk about how it brings people together, band of brothers, all is one. But it seemed like in this film, it's different. You know, Julian discovers who he is individually through this, despite his team or his brother was bitter. Am I accurate in that assessment? Yeah, I think it's great because Hamish will have, because Hamish also understands rugby culture really well. The culture, because knowing rugby culture in the early 80s, Hmm. um, and particularly at high school, um, was a very specific thing because, one, the game was very different. Um, It was also, there was a certain mixture of toxic masculinity, hmm. a strangely sort of, because um, in New Zealand, rugby has a slightly religious connotation to it. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, there's a boys club quality to it as well with all the, all the good side and all the bad side with it. So for instance, even when we go through the rugby game that we actually see, I used a specific piece of music, Jerusalem in that, because I remembered it really summed up not only the colonial quality to what this game is, the archaic quality of what it is and its religious connotations. And when you see a Maori boy there sort of being welcomed because he's playing well into that club, that toxic and often racist club, there's something quite unsettling about it and quite disturbing. And so I think that then maybe Tamish can talk about, I think, what what the complexity of what was happening in the school with the rugby as well, particularly with Jamie, because you did get a sense of the manipulation from the, let's say, the white side of the school wanting to utilise um, either either um, the, the Māori kids or the Māori um, uh, culture for their own manipulation, for their own needs, which was interesting. Yeah, like it's it's an interesting, like it's, it's a strange thing really because, you know, as I said, we both love rugby. Like rugby was a big part of my life for a, for a long, long time. Like I, yeah. I coached my little fellow's rugby team, and like it's it's wholly a positive thing. But I think 
particularly when you look at the context of that time, I think it's a bit of a double-edged sword, really, because you've got, you know, you've got the, the qualities that make rugby such a wonderful game, and that's the teamwork and and the collaboration and the relationships that formed. They could also be used, they could be used as a force for good, but they could also be used as a force for, for you know, for, for bad as well. And I think when you look particularly at the the principle, I think it's, it's using rugby as a vehicle to push forward his own needs or his own ideals. And I think it's that, that commandeering or that misappropriation of, of rugby as, as a sport, but using it to push your own kind of what, what, what you want, as opposed to, you know, what, what others need. So I think the, the, whilst, you know, teamwork and all of those things are such a lovely, lovely thing. I think there's a difference between, there's a fine balance between, you know, teamwork for positive and then a pack mentality where it then becomes um, using it as a way to to pressure and and to um, make people do things that they, they probably would not feel comfortable doing. I think, um, you know, like like I say, I, you know, it was it was a really, it was a balancing act for us because um, as people who are, you know, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy rugby and enjoy sport, um, it wasn't wanting to make rugby the the enemy in any sense. It was about um, the way that some people were using rugby wasn't a great thing, wasn't a it wasn't a, wasn't a positive thing. Um, but I guess when you look at Jamie's journey through that story, it, it, like I think he's probably representative of you know how rugby can be used for good. Like Jamie, he he uses rugby as a way to kind of lift himself out of out of a, a tough position that he's in. And by the end of the story, whilst it's very subtly hinted at, yeah. what you want to kind of get across is that these young men are going to follow Jamie and follow his approach to 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 rugby, um, and to follow his approach to supporting them as opposed to following the principles kind of way. Um, yeah, and 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 so yeah, like it, it's it's uh, like I say, it was a tricky balancing act, but but one that we um, we we like to think we kind of um, we got close to achieving. Yeah. So I think I have one more question in uh, in timing here, but um, you had me tearing up. My, my favorite scene was the scene where Josh's mother is watching the audition tape. Mm-hmm. Again, so much emotion, you know, announcing who he is. He, he he puts so much into it, or Julian does, you know, out of breath. And then the calmness is like a weight off, being lifted off his shoulders. You know, then Minnie, uh, really no words. The way she acted in that scene just just really pulled me in. I don't even know if I have a question for you. That scene was just so, uh, I don't know, it was just so emotional for me. Well, it, and that had to have been the, what you wanted out of it, right? <laughs> yeah, it, it's an interesting question because um, I think Hamish has um, will be able to answer this in a very personal way based on how that was put together, that that hockey and what it meant for uh, mm. for Julian. But the shot with Minnie was, was uh, originally planned early in the shooting Minnie said, no, please, can you reschedule us so I can actually see him do the huck? Oh. So then we rescheduled it later and it was one take. And she just, that was all coming straight from her heart. Wow. And um, very powerful for all of us to see it. And um, and um, it was one of those great, great moments where, uh, in a way, you, you're indebted to the actor's instinct. She, she offered us so much. I mean, she's a beautiful performance through her whole film as a solo mum and all of the layers of what she did. But to, to create that was a was a really interesting thing from the from the Huck point of view because you 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 just talk about us tearing up. One thing that emotionally hits me is when his voice breaks when he's doing it because he's he's almost crying and performing. And now, in order to get to that point, Hamish can probably talk a little bit more about the process of that Hucker and creating that, and also the environment for for Julian to achieve that. Yeah, I think, you know, they, Paul made a really good point there about, about Minnie. Like, it was coming, her reaction was coming from a really personal place. And whilst, you know, like, uh, she could have quite easily kind of phoned it in if she was watching something that, you know, if she wasn't watching Julian's performance, she wanted to see Julian's performance. Because, you know, like, for, for Minnie, as, as a person, she really, really strongly connected with the things to our Māori, the, the Māori side of, of, of things here. And she really wanted to do right and do justice to, to to that side of the story, and so yeah, that that reaction it was it was very moving for us as whilst it was you know certainly moving for audiences is really moving behind the camera too, and and I think the same thing goes for Julian. I mean Julian's performance, whilst it is a performance, you know, a huge amount of of personal um, stuff was brought to that. He um you know with a haka that you know you. 
because you're expending absolutely everything in a haka, um, we we could never expect to uh, to get him to repeat that performance. So it was it was maybe two two and a bit two and a bit takes to to get that, and so ensuring that he was able to put everything into the performances and and not again phone it in um, was was really important to us. The 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 haka itself is. Um, Uh, speaks of of the people of Kaitahu, the the, the tribe in the in the South Island where the story is set. Um, the the people of Kaitahu, some members of of Mana Whenua, of the people of Kaitahu, wrote this haka um, uh, for for the film, um, and supported us all the way through. So alongside our our producer Angela Cud, um, they provided uh, you know they 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 choreographed it. They supported Julian with learning it, um, and. You know, in the in the haka scene and the um, protests, we had members of of the of the tribe um, uh, performing uh, at the at the at the riots. So everything about it um, was coming from a very um, a very specific place, uh, and and so for Julian, he did not need to look too far to to find or or to understand kind of the weight of of what he was doing there. Yeah. So whilst there was a lot of personal stuff coming to it, there was also a recognition that he was representing a people as well. Um, and that all kind of ended up on screen. And the next day he was exhausted, Bill. The next day oh. he um we had a really we'd scheduled a, a lot easier day for for Julian because it took him a day to recover. Um it was a it was a huge uh, amount of energy expended for that. Yeah. Wow well it came out in that scene. Uh Paul uh, Hamish, thank you so much and good luck with this film. Thank you very Thanks much. Very much Bill. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers.